Hi, I'm Alex Archbull. I've been buying and selling antiques since I was a kid. Over the years, generations of our family have gotten involved in the business, and I'll search just about anywhere I can to find hidden treasures both big and small. I never know what I'll turn up next. It's about exploring new places, seeing new sights, and having fun. And even though sometimes I get over my head, we try and make things a little better along the way. This is Curiosity Inc. Hey everybody and welcome to today's episode. Well, uh, today I have found myself on, on, not a, on Vancouver Island, uh, Canada, and I'm in the town of Brentwood Bay, where we are visiting a store that I was in before, and I actually remember thinking it was a really cool shop called Everything Old. Uh, we're going to have a look around, see if maybe there's a treasure that I can pick up for myself, but also kind of show you guys what this cool shop has to offer. So enough of me yammering at the camera, let's get out of the car and go explore. Let's go. The one thing that I love about coming out to Vancouver Island is that while we're in the throes of winter back in Edmonton, Alberta, here it is uh, basically early spring where you've got uh, plants and grass and there's palm trees and things are really just starting to bloom around here. So very soon this will be lush like it's summertime. Well, we still have probably another couple months before we get there. So uh, I have like a time machine into the future, but let's, uh, let's go check out the shop and see what they have. Ooh, there's a bakery next door too, which smells amazing. Might have to stop there after. The antique store kind of starts, um, I think they have like three bays or so here. And uh, you've got some furniture outdoors and you keep walking. Yeah, this would have been, yeah, I think one, two, three or four different little shops here. So really cool space. Random glass dome. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Let's go in. Wow, when you first walk in the door, you're sort of greeted with these this great display of nautical ships. And of course, don't touch don't touch the boat or don't rock the boat. Because <laughs> um, you wouldn't want to accidentally wreck any of the rigging on here. But I've always thought these were fascinating and cool. In fact, if you ever watch any of my videos, you'll probably see that we have a handmade wooden ship over top of our piano. And I just loved to look at it. And this must have been somebody's collection, you know, like you build these from kits. They probably had too many and then off they went here. But uh, lovely decor, especially if you live on an island, which these folks do. We've got a sort of assortment of military helmets, World War II Hungary. Uh, and then you've got uh, other helmets going back probably as early as the First World War over here from the looks of things. Canadian Doughboy helmet with a net and that that netting you would actually tuck leaves and branches and stuff so you could add to your uh, uh, uniform that way but lots of old microscopes which are always really fun and weights and scales like the cabinets these nice old wooden cabinets I am kind of on the lookout today to see if I can find myself the usual things I look for, maybe like some old Hot Wheels or um, watches, things of that nature. So uh, I'm going to wander about and have a look. It's like a 1920s cream separator can de Laval. It would have had a picture of the cream separator on the side. It's a little worn, but... So this is the tool department. I like how things are organized. And that's, that's the one nice thing about when you visit an independent shop versus visiting an antique mall is that they can organize things really nicely. So you've got tools back there, you've got houseware collectibles in this area. And I think, oh look, there's even a, a chef who looks like he's been sampling his own food and a little advertising piece. Those are popular in the late 90s, early 2000s. You'd buy these at like home decor stores. Sometimes you have a little waiter that would hold a tree. Not terribly old, but it's crazy to think that's almost 25 years ago now. So young people will think that that is an antique. <laughs> I did see the Pyrex here and a couple nice patterns to look for if you have these at your own home. Um, Pyrex bowls are always really good. The plain, like that primary color set, that's maybe late 40s and they made these for a few years after. There's the harvest mixing bowl. What you're looking for more are the ones with the patterns. That's where you start to get a little bit more value with the pattern sets. The uh, black snowflake is nice. Um, one that I, I have at home, um, my wife has this set, which is the Amish butter print set. In fact, I've seen people turn those into tattoos, which is a really interesting tattoo to get that around your arm or something. 
um, really kind of a nice little de decoration. Anyway, that that's a nice. I don't think Melissa has that bowl, but I don't know if she's collecting the smaller casserole bowls. She's got the mixing bowls, the bigger ones, and the refrigerator set. There's more of the primary bowls down there. And over here, lots of primary. Um, the other set that's really quite valuable is this um, pink, uh, what do they call it? The pink gooseberry set. And that's uh, 1957 or so, same as the Amish butter print. So really early where you get into more like the 70s with these browns and avocados and stuff, which are equally cool. But anyway, the difference between a $35 bowl for the little primary one and like a $100 bowl based on the, the pattern. So check your kitchens check your grandma's kitchen probably has some of that stuff in there um or your basement sometimes in storage you find that but uh of course corningware always popular they still make corningware they still make pyrex but the older collectible stuff is quite good it's an old water cooler that would have sat up high on a stand and had a little spigot there back in the day kind of like that one there I thought this was pretty creative how they display their bottles. They've got this old advertising rack. What would this rack have been used for originally? Um, drying, uh, it's uh, from France and it was used to dry uh, wine bottles. Oh, to dry, so it is yeah. for wine bottles. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of repurposed it as a display and then we do it with Christmas lights. <laughs> Christmas time. Well, that's a great, a great way to display them. I mean, okay. that's what it was intended for. So not something you find very often. No, it, this one, we uh, originally had it all with like uh, light blue and purple bottles, like all antique bottles. We yeah. had it in the window. So when the sun caught so it, it looked like a Christmas it tree. Was incredible. Yeah. You had, sun. when I was here before, uh, years back, you had like a pirate treasure chest that you were trying to figure out what it was. Remember that the really ornate, like a Spanish oh, multi. Yes. So that was actually originally made in Germany, and it had um, multiple locks, all made of iron. Yeah, uh, probably false locks on it. it and... There was a false lock. Yeah. yeah, right where you thought the key was, and there was a secret thing that opened, and then you put in the actual keys, and it was fantastic. Uh, that one I think was dating back to the 1500s. And was there anything in it when you eventually got it open? No. No, oh. <laughs> no, like the no other Dead Sea Scrolls or <laughs> no. I wish. I mean, we do actually come across. Um, in fact, I'm going through storage. Unfortunately, we had a pipe burst oh. uh, in our warehouse, so we're clearing things out, and there are some crates that have been sealed since the war um, with supplies. There's uh, one with medical supplies. Um, uh, so unfortunately, if I find morphine and stuff, that has to be disposed oh, yeah. of. I, I've had that but, problem um, before too. We yeah. found a, a medical kit and it was full of all that stuff. And I took it into the pharmacy and they looked at me like I was a drug dealer. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I'm not, no, I'm not bringing 100-year-old bottles of morphine and heroin or whatever was in there. The, but The craziest was we went into a hidden, uh, it was a vault uh, that locked from the inside. And we went in, uh, that was in um, Chinatown in Victoria. Uh, which is the second oldest Chinatown in North America, apparently. And um, we ended up finding um, all these weird clay things. It turned out to be opium bowls. Oh. And then there was a whole stash of opium there. Oh, which, gosh. I'm like, that's from the <laughs> turn of the century. It was amazing. Uh, just incredible history. But, yeah, that yeah, had to go. Yeah, got to be careful that, that with that stuff. That had to be stuff. disposed of, yeah. So, well, I mean, I'm enjoying Are you okay if I browse around Absolutely. and look? I'm just okay. thrilled you're here, man. Like, no, and I... Been, uh, yeah, we're just excited you're here. Well, you always have such a, a beautiful store to wander through, and I'm just admiring all of the, you know, the artwork oh. and the old advertising, and you don't see uh, black velvet paintings nearly often enough. <laughs> no, there's... The Holy Grail are some of the 70s nudes, uh, 60s and 70s, uh, you know, semi... Uh, oh, yeah, the, the uh, pinup girl kind of things, yeah. yeah. Um, Not, you mean Velvet Elvis isn't the most popular? popular actually i am looking for a velvet elvis it's like i have this list of things that i want to have in the store and then it's out of my system like the acme tnt dynamite plunger oh yeah i yeah. actually got one. Oh, did you and then okay it was out of my system and it found a new home which i be looking over my head for anvils hanging from the ceiling to <laughs> well you never know <laughs> we start chasing after you yeah then. okay <laughs> well it's usually the coyote that gets it in the end the coyote it? yeah yeah i'm safe <laughs> all right well i'm gonna keep browsing and is the upstairs still open around the corner yeah, there that is that we turned into a photo studio um as we're putting things up on our new website uh but that's open as well okay well I'll, I'll do. Take you in the office and show you all the secret stuff. Oh, the secret have. stuff, yeah. <laughs> guys! Did you hear that? I might get to see the secret stuff. Okay. A few little toy cars down here. T 
tin plate. That was part of a little matchbox uh, racing set. Had a trailer and a little race car went in the back. But what is the most unique thing here so far? Well, we're going to wander down the other side where he had some antique black powder pistols. There's an, uh, probably a late 1800s, maybe early 1900s dress form with the wire frame. Neat piece. All these old pictures. You, instant relatives. Just get somebody else's relative and hang it on your wall and say it was great. I actually went to a guy's house and he had a picture like that on the wall. And he said, that's my, you know, great uncle so-and-so. And I said, really? He said, no, you just liked it for the frame. <laughs> so you just never know. Uh, old advertising calendar there. Pretty is a picture, it says. And she's got a very colorful, multicolored dress. And you've got every kind of washboard you can imagine here. And uh, these are for actually warming under your bed. I think you'd put hot coals in there. Somebody can correct me if I'm incorrect, but I believe it would be like hot coals go in there. You slide it under your bed. It keeps your bed nice and warm at night. Kind of seems like an attractive idea now, especially uh, when, you, when you get that cold weather where I am. HMCS New Glasgow. So there's some ship's presentation flags and all kinds of neat stuff. There's Hudson Bay Blanket. The uh, wool blankets like that are always, they're eternally popular. So it's always somebody looking for a wool Hudson Bay blanket. Royal Dalton plates. So all kinds of neat stuff. Now, it would be nice. That is kind of the right era, but I really like, and I've been looking if you're watching at home and you have one, if you ever see the Art Deco lamps from like the 20s or 30s where it's like usually, it could be Atlas holding the, a globe on his back or, um, or a lady figure and she's holding a globe that lights up in that sort of frosted glass. I had one years ago and I kind of regretted selling it. So I'm keeping my eyes open. So if you're at home and you have an old Art Deco lamp, old Alex here is looking for one, kind of similar to that one down there, actually. Not that's more of like a, they've got the accordion that's you know like jesters on both sides, something similar to that. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll find one here today. But uh, fireplace adds irons, a little bit of everything. Dutch hand painted clogs. Canada's authentic Western rider. What's this? Cowboy Kings. Oh, it's GWG. They actually uh, were made in uh, Edmonton, where I'm from. They had a big GWG factory. In fact, the people that owned GWG had a D-type Jaguar race car back in the 50s and early 60s. And my friend was trying to track it down, thinking it might be in somebody's basement over there. But alas, no. Um, it sold at auction uh, recently for millions of dollars. But these people that owned that gene company once had some <laughs> quite a few factories and cool cars and stuff. So really neat. And this would be after 1967. You know how I know? It's got the Canadian flag with the maple leaf. That was a, a contest they did with kids actually to come up with the Canadian flag. Before that, they had the red ensign or they flew the uh, uh, Union flag there. So you can kind of date things based on what flag it has too. But let's go wander around up front. Have a look-see. Now, you've said that you've been doing some black powder shooting yourself? Yes. Um, and you got the mustache to match? I have been trying to grow in the mutton chops. The gray is competing with my efforts, but... Um, well, no, it's uh, it's an <laughs> impressive amount of stash. That's Thank you. <laughs> and so, I see you've got some of your wares here as well. Some... Yeah, these are some of them. I mean, we have about, in terms of long arms, machine guns... Um, uh, and small or, 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 or pistols and the, the like, probably about 200 pieces. Okay, that's a good collection. But yeah. we just had a movie shot here, so we had to completely turn the store upside down. Um, and then the boats arrived at the same time. Right. So uh, we just sort of switched that out. But um, I thought these were uh, prosthetic legs for a second, but those are boot yeah, they forms. Do. <laughs> and actually, that's on my list is to find an old wood one. Like the type that you'd strap on yeah, to your... Yeah lower leg yeah that's what it reminded me of at first but yeah that's just to keep your uh, military boots or your tall boots all stretched out nice so i can show you there's a if you'd like to see oh this is an airplane seat <laughs> an, seat. an ejector seat out of an f5 fighter that's funny it is? okay he's busy chatting with the customer as he should so i am going to go wander upstairs and see what they have in the upstairs area 
little desk up here. There was a period of time back in the 90s, I kind of probably would have wanted to have a whole house done in 1800s furniture. That uh, white painted barrister's bookcase is probably a really nice um, veneer wood or nice um, wood underneath all that paint. Interesting that they've done it this way though, and I do like the little knobs they put on it, but you know, its original form would have been pretty interesting too. Not that it can't be undone. Oh, you got printer's uh, blocks and printer's cabinets. I, you know, it's funny, back home, I saw somebody was giving away an antique printer's press. You would need all these blocks to actually make it work again. You know, people do just buy the blocks because, you know, it's the letter of their name or, you know, maybe they're going to print something interesting. Who knows? Oh, you got comics. A lot of comics. A lot of, a little bit on the newer side, but uh, quite a few comics up here. This is a very old looking book. Bound issue, Scottish American Journal. Oh, I see, yeah, it is a bound newspaper from 1877 with condition issues, they say, but if you had family from this area back in 1877, let's see, you can kind of see Orkney and Shetland. A public holiday was held in Kirkwell on the 19th. Plans have been accepted by the Stromness Harbor Commissioners for a New Pier. Well, the stuff that was important was happening in 1877. Fascinating to read old newspapers and see what they were up to. What do we have here? A autographic cash register. Very early style. And I guess that would probably be your change drawer down here, which probably would pop open, I guess, when you ring through a sale. That's a very early cash register. Nice little desk set here. Blotter, what does it say? Friedrich Gornick patented bronze pheasant inkwell and blotter with original glass insert. That's neat. And signed, which is nice. It's the thing that's fascinating about, you know, things of days gone by is that just the, the way they're put together, the art of it, it's just so cool. They did make a cool globe, and I was talking about that lamp earlier, but there was a globe about that size, and it had a big sort of bronze atlas, and he was holding the globe on his back and lit up. I saw one once at an antique store, and I thought, oh, that's too expensive. You think I could find another one? Nope, I cannot. <laughs> I'll head back downstairs. So I was looking around in all the cases, and I'm looking for watches, and you brought this one out from the back. That's a uh, silver case... Uh, World War One watch and what's great about it, it has his name on the back York's Dragoons and it appears to still be working which is nice but really lovely little piece but you haven't put a price on this one yet so I'm gonna have to follow up but that is something I'd be interested in and, and I might point out if I if I could yeah that we discovered there's a bunch of um, little markings that have been added to this they're very very difficult to see and it turns out that back in the day especially um, when soldiers came home from the First World War, uh, often they would pawn these. And so each time it was pawned, a value would be etched on it so they knew what to buy it oh, okay. back at. Um, and Amber can fill you in, but I thought that was, so it's been, I think, sold three times or pawned three times, but that's way back. And on the on the inside of those markings, sometimes that'll be the maker uh, notating when it was repaired last too. They do that. I I took my watches into a guy, and they still with their little etching tool will write like you know two thousand and twenty three on they the inside. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. some do. So it's still going on. Yeah, oh, some cool. old school. Yeah, but no, it's a cool piece. I, I've got a couple trench watches at home right now, so I guess oh, I may wow. as well start a collection of them. But uh, beautiful shop, and um, if people want to find you. I guess they Every, can... Everythingold.ca. It's a new website, so we only have about 900 products up, but we're working on it. So that's where you can check them out. Oh, wow. And uh, thanks again for having me uh, have a look around. And uh, if you talk Thank to Amber you. and you put a price on the watch, maybe we can chat about that too. We'll be back to you. We know you're here for a little bit. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, well, nice folks. Uh, they always have an interesting selection of stuff. And um, with luck, I'll hear back from them about the uh, old military wristwatch once they put a price on it. As for me though, I might have to stop in this bakery next door and grab a little snack for the road. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.